Exaggeration propaganda is a part of the age of Kali Yuga where we are living in currently, right? And unfortunately, astrology is also not spared. There are certain aspects which are very highly exaggerated in YouTube astrology by some astrologers. Now, what do I mean by exaggeration? Mm. When you see the slides, you will see there are very important points mentioned, which means the ones which are highlighted are actually very important in the sense, you know, like uh, one particular thing is very important. But what do I mean when I say exaggeration? It means that they are blown up to such an extent that people cannot believe that apart from that, something else is also important. Okay. So when I show something, it does not mean that that is not important, but it means that people forget there's the overall chart. Okay. There are so many things in astrology, like uh, there is uh, divisional charts. There are so many divisional charts. Then we have Shadbal, then we have Ashtagvarga, then we have Nakshatra. Then, uh, I mean, it's a part of the Panchang. We have Vara, Karana, Tithi. Uh, then there is Avakara Chakra, there is Yogi, Ava Yogi Planet, there are so many things basically. There are Nakshatras in uh, like uh, some forms of astrology, they also take sublords. So there are a thousand things, you know, Raj Yogas, Maharaj Yogas, uh, uh, Mahapurush Yogas, you know, Parivartan Yoga. So everything has to be considered, alright? So please take a note if you feel that you are too much focusing on these aspects. Uh, these points only uh, because it might be the reason why your uh, predictions are failing okay so as usual if you're new then please like comment share and subscribe to the channel and if you want a consultation from me then please um, go to the description section you will find my website there god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him number one the navamsha chart very 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 exaggerated okay now again not denouncing the importance of the navamsha here but there are other divisional charts too so for example the navamsha tells you uh, what behavioral patterns are you carrying in yourself from your previous lifetimes okay so for example if you have some talents uh, what are some talents that you have been carrying from your previous lifetimes what kind of skills do you have okay uh, but then uh, th there are other things also like you know there is uh, the d12 chart which is a very important chart which is known as Dwada Shamsha chart people don't see that why because uh, they see oh yeah my son is bad in the Navamsha so my relation with my father is bad but uh, we cannot see that from the um, Navamsha for that we need to go to the Dwada Shamsha of course a bad son in the d12 does not mean your relationship with your father is bad but it can show there are some significant uh, difference of opinion and all this which might lead to some bad relationship but that's not necessary okay uh, so uh, similarly you know for career we have the dashamsha chart okay so uh, yeah you need to see the detail to understand what field of action you would be dealing in your daily life in your profession irrespective of the type of profession okay so the profession is seen from the D1 chart, the area where you will be involved with. Your skills are seen from D9 and the D10 tells irrespective of what are you doing in your job, business, whatever, what are some areas, you know, like for example, I said uh, in my D10 video of Saturn, Saturn in D10, Saturn is the Atma Karaka for the D10. So uh, Saturn, if in the second house in your D10 can um, give you requirement of finance numbers counting mathematics irrespective of the profession that you are in okay so please also focus on other divisional charts uh, and sometimes i see why i have written d9 here sometimes i see some things which are like very bizarre like sometimes people they they completely ignore the d1 and then they directly jump to the d9 they say Oh, D9 is saying this, that will happen. No, I mean, first you need to check the D1, then the D9. Okay, then you have to check everything else. And then you have to come back and see the D1. Because the D1 will ultimately tell you which karmas are manifesting and in what way. Okay. 
Number two, contrary to popular belief, yes, nobody sees dashas. Everybody is wanting to know transits. Okay, so for example, uh, people say, oh, if Saturn, uh, Jupiter, or Saturn or Venus uh, transits your second house, seventh house, eleventh house, then you will get married. Okay, but. Uh, what people don't understand is that uh, the transits show that there is some uh, focus in that area of life but ultimately uh, what is the quality and what is the result what, what, what kind of area will it be that will be decided on the dashas you know, for example uh, if you if you see some uh, somebody's chart who has no marriage you know let's take the example of some politician okay uh, even if in his or her chart uh, Jupiter might transit uh, or Saturn might transit uh, the 7th house, 2nd house, 11th house 10 times but they may not get married because uh, marriage is not indicated in their horoscope and more importantly uh, in their Mahadasha and Tardasha okay? uh, this is primarily uh, because uh, in western astrology there is not much concept of dashas it's primarily a vedic astrology concept and somehow transits are more popular but uh, that is the reason why people lose faith in astrology because everybody has a different dasha okay now you may say oh but i am capricorn ascendant she is also capricorn he is also capricorn so my dasha is same my moon sign is same sun sign is same no everybody has a different dasha because uh, the Mahadasha Lord is differently placed even if they are in the same house with somebody else but it will be in a different nakshatra in a different navamsha different it will be aspected by some different planet okay so no two people in this entire universe can have the <coughs> same horoscope neither can they have the same dashas okay so please read and understand the Mahadasha Antar Dasha and then watch transits okay individual placements yes predict uh, saturn is in seventh house there will be divorce okay Oof. venus is in sixth there's divorce seventh lord is afflicted divorce okay so you just see one thing and then you uh, draw everything else you know this is like uh, this is very overrated you know i can show you at least 10 charts if not 100 with venus in the sixth or with saturn in seventh saturn rahu ketu sun mars in seventh with seventh lord afflicted debilitated venus debilitated afflicted Hindustanas, whatever uh, but they are having good married lives now does it mean that these placements don't uh, affect you no certainly they do but if you want to talk of the entire married life you need to check if the person is getting married at the age of 25 then you need to check for the next 40 years <coughs> what kind of dashas uh, will this person have you know uh, good dashas or bad dashas for marriage you know not not good in good and bad in general but specifically for marriage how is the mahadasha okay how are the mahadashas basically because for 40 years the person may get three or even four mahadashas right but you don't see that you just see oh one planet is here that's it divorce is confirmed or you go the other way around you see oh jupiter is in seventh house excellent marriage you know but what if it is the sixth lord you know problems in marriage right sixth lord in the seventh not very great but again just because he's sixth lord in seven does it mean he'll get divorced well not necessarily unless all the planets agree when a divorce is a very extreme event you know it does not happen every day right <clears throat> so if somebody is getting divorced you need to understand it is not just one planet or venus it is like all the nine planets are agreeing or at least four or five planets have to agree okay for divorce which means they are badly placed for marriage only then it will happen and on top you need a good dasha for divorce yes if you have a good dasha which is good for continuing your marriage and if there is indication of divorce in the chart by multiple planets then there will be no divorce there will be separation you will stay separate but the divorce will not happen okay officially so that's how you have to see actually Kundli Milan, Gun Milan. Okay, now this is not overrated, but what is what is certainly overrated is just the Kundli Milan. Okay, you just match the gunas and then that's it. Now, why this does not work very well in Kaliva? You will see like hundred thousand cases where they did Gun Milan and they ended up in divorce. Why? 
बिकॉज ऑफ टू रीजन्स लाइक युधिष्ठिर महाराज सेस दिस टू द यक्षा इन द महाभारत वेन द यक्षा हैड टेक इन द लाइफ ऑफ द अदर फोर पांडवाज दैट देर हैज बीन लॉट ऑफ इंटरकास्ट मैरेजेस बिकॉज ऑफ विच दिस इज नॉट वेरी वेल वर्किंग नाउ इमेजिन फाइव थाउजेंड ईयर्स बैक एंड देन वी हैव ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी यू नो ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री लाइक इंटर कास्ट मैरेज इंटर रेशियल मैरेज वॉट नॉट इज गोइंग ऑन इन कलयुगा राइट सो इन दैट टू से सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ अ चाइनीज लेडी इज गेटिंग मैरिड टू अ इटालियन मैन so then uh, how do you do gun milan there you know do, do, i mean i mean that's bizarre i mean <laughs> you can try but it may work but uh, you cannot you have to take it with a pinch of salt okay and what is certainly the problem is you do not analyze the overall charts of the boy and girl before marriage you know, which means before going to gun milan you have to check if the boy and girl has a uh, potential for marriage okay so let me give you an example and you also have to check the character of the person so for example imagine uh, you 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 are a man and uh, you, um, you you are looking for a girl to marry and suddenly you imagine you know hypothetically you <coughs> uh, you go go into a place where you find a lady and then you feel oh she is very nice you know maybe we have a good compatibility blah 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 and then you uh, uh, go to an astrologer and he says oh your compatibility is very nice but suppose uh, you come to know that this lady who you met is like a financial fraud or uh, the lady comes to know that the, before that this man is like a criminal you know he has uh, committed some blunder or some extreme uh, criminal activity and then now he has absconded so now you may be very good uh, and very compatible with each other but does it mean that you should marry a like a extreme criminal or a financial fraud a perpetual fraud okay uh, so do you think you'll be happy even if you have good good milan well no because there are some fundamental problems so uh, the fundamental problems have to be seen from their individual chart so before you uh, before you go into gun milan uh, see their individual charts if if the charts are not good then well case is dismissed no question of doing kundli milan okay all right no use of astrology for making self introspection or character development knowing flaws and knowing your inner flaws and working on them no no interest in that just making future predictions okay so one should use astrology as a tool for self development and for becoming one's best version rather than for simply making future predictions because if you're just making future predictions then uh, future in the sense you know your own life's predictions or you know some mundane astrology predictions like who is going to win the election and all this then what happens is you disassociate yourself from astrology astrology becomes something very impersonal okay so for example people say oh shani is giving me divorce you know rahu is giving me uh, addictions you know so it makes you very helpless you know because you feel oh there is a big planet out there called saturn who is sitting and punishing me but what if i told you that planet is just reflecting some bad karma which you yourself did in the past okay and you are not ready to accept that you just say oh no it's saturn after all right who can challenge the mighty saturn well nobody can but saturn has other things to do also right he is not jobless to just keep sitting uh, to just sit and keep giving uh, beatings to people uh, contrary to what people think okay so saturn just gives you back what uh, the kind of sufferings you gave to others okay so please use astrology for self introspection and character development uh, find your flaws have an honest conversation with an astrologer and once you improve yourself then everything else will fall in line but people don't do that people will do the opposite they will say oh i don't have good career for the next two years give me some remedy okay so do some magic remedy and just forget it no that's not how astrology works actually yes this is very similar they will justify bad personal behavior in the name of you know uh, malefics or mal transiting malefics oh shani has entered my first house what can i do after all i i'll become lazy right i'll procrastinate so <clears throat> now this is also not very good because you are disassociating the personal aspect because the planets represent a personal aspect within you okay 
so if you don't understand that and you just uh, justify uh, then uh, well god save you and regarding this you know in uh, india sometimes you know, this this funny saying you know like hum acche hamare grah kharab hai which means i am good only problem is my planets are not good okay so this is like saying oh i am very good only my resume is not good okay my resume is showing 50% in my uh, 10th exam like 40, 50 52% in my 12th so 53% in my bachelor's uh, 55% in my master's everything i am perfect you know only problem is in my resume you know what if somebody talks like this you know in job interview will they get a job well okay yeah this is another thing which is exaggerated which is like you make some fancy predictions of the future but uh, you you put so much focus on that you exaggerate that and oh you should do you, you will do this you should do this that you know this will give you money that that kind of spouse you should look for but you don't see what is the inherent nature of the person what is the psychophysical disposition you know uh is this person meant for marriage should this person marry should this person be a celibate or is this person a womanizer you know will he ruin the lives of other ladies if he marries or uh, will this lady put some uh, false you know fake case against you know uh, the husband or the in-laws you, know, you don't see all this you just see you know what some fancy things okay if you both marry you know you will have a good financial future or this and that and you know regarding career also what what should you do you know like uh, you don't see the talents the skill sets and all this you just see oh next year 10th house is getting activated you will become famous you know do something get get a managerial job or go into politics you know this will happen that will happen but is the person meant to take up leadership role is the person meant to do politics well that is something we do not consider and we just simply predict the future well that creates a lot of psychological problems later on <coughs> ah this is classic this is primarily in the west okay and now it's permeating into into the holy land of india also unfortunately sun sign moon sign okay they go into the bar uh, in the west you know i have heard that's how they do they they go into the bar uh in the night and when they want to flirt with somebody the man asks oh what's your sun sign something like that you know it's uh, uh it's very unfortunate that they use astrology for all this but now it's permeating to india also as india is becoming more and more uh, modernized and westernized you know they are using all these things and yeah there are a lot of other things they are doing <coughs> like uh venus is in this nakshatra what what kind of sex life will you have you know which sex position is your favorite okay with this nakshatra i am this so maybe i like to have sex this way that way you know so uh, the point is you know you judge the entire personality uh, by just one thing you know like sun sign moon sign and also you do it in a very <coughs> derogatory way in a very greedy or in a very lustful way or in a very uh envious way okay so this is also not very good so the sun sign moon sign is very important but then uh, please see the overall chart don't just make the personality like for example somebody is taurus lagna you say oh they are addicted to food you know this that blah 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 or taurus moon taurus sun you know yes they could be if you take a poll then now you may find 20 30% of the all taurus moon taurus sun or taurus lagna people are addicted to food but then the question is uh, who who is not addicted to food you know i have very rarely seen somebody who says you know i don't like to eat okay now of course uh, people with a prominent taurus may eat a bit more uh, but then they have so many other things in life right that you cannot say just by seeing somebody's taurus moon you can't say what kind of profession they will have okay you can still say they will be good as a hotelier or in some hospitality business but does it mean they will do that only because they are taurus moon or taurus sun well not necessarily all right thank you very much please add further in the comments jai shri ram okay so please understand all these aspects are very important but don't exaggerate them and make 
it all about them okay if you do that then this will be exaggeration all right thank you very much once again god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and if you want a consultation from me my website is down below if you like this video hit the thumbs up and share it with somebody who needs to know this and if you are new then please also subscribe to the channel okay and comment your thoughts below jai shri ram